and we're live what's up everybody welcome to the ricky remedy live stream where i'm doing this every tuesday and thursday 3 p.m eastern time on youtube and uh yeah let's so let's get started on some stuff um first and foremost uh which i have here my website ricky-remedy.com uh where i have basically all my music that i've released this year um <clears throat> the remedy kit which has a lot of uh, awesome really cool sounds that people still use to since i've first released on 2000, in 2017 which is uh um pretty crazy how many people use it so uh, a lot of big names have used it i've actually gotten one of my biggest placements off of it um and yeah so grab the remedy kit uh, subscribe to my Patreon where I have uh, exclusive kits in there as well, where they're only on my Patreon, not on my website. Um, also, we're doing, uh, we have uh, exclusive music, I'd say probably over like 50 songs, probably more than that. Uh, I'm always putting new stuff in there that you can only get on Patreon, stuff that I can't really release officially. So you go ahead and uh, jump in there and subscribe. And uh, also there are tiers where you can have one-on-one -on -one lessons with me, which uh, you can either do directly, you can just message me on Instagram, message me on uh, Discord, message me uh, in any possible way and say, hey, I'd like to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I do from an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, you can be at any level of expertise. And um, definitely uh, there has been yet to have, there is yet to be a question that I haven't been able to answer. I'm pretty, pretty much... Uh, able to help anybody out with whatever uh issues or questions they might have or and i also come from a pretty phil philosophical standpoint I'm, and you know people i use fl studio but a lot of the people use ableton and other stuff so um but i kind of uh teach and and uh instruct more from a philosophical point which basically means it's not really so much technical it help i can help uh you know improve uh your production just through you know foundational teachings uh and then yeah live stream of course i already discussed that uh discord jump into my discord um it basically has people who are always usually in my live stream uh they just talk you know people like rare which was up rare um and uh yeah like we're gonna start doing some beat contests uh some beat battles and they're gonna be all through there you can collaborate with me in these live streams just by going into discord going to into the drop we do feedbacks every thursday so you can go into the promo drop, self promo, um, and then yeah. So that's my Discord, and uh, definitely trying to grow it some more. Uh, services, I definitely gotta uh, update this, but uh, yeah, if you need some somebody to mix your stuff down, uh, I can I can be that guy. Um, I also do production like beats and stuff. If you need some beats, you know, uh, we can uh, we can make something happen, and uh, also like visual effects and music videos and stuff like that. So. Uh, jump into there and if you want to figure and, and like i said i have to update it but for the most part uh everything in there is pretty much like what i do uh and then yeah and i think that's about it um and so now we can go ahead and basically uh jump into today's subject um which is uh you know pretty pretty easy subject for me to just talk about and just kind of get get in on and you know uh usually you know it's pretty easy to just jump in and go straight to uh making music and stuff but i think uh today i kind of wanted to be more of a discussion and then obviously make music uh basically what we're talking about here but to the people who are in here currently uh i'm sure all of you guys know exactly what trap music is uh edm trap music to be specific but this is for people that might come and watch this later or you know i'm just gonna go ahead and uh you know share this video for with people and let them kind of see and understand and uh, give my pers perspective of what uh, EDM trap music is, what it means to me, how I got into it. Uh, just kind of giving like a, I guess you could say a background of like who I am. And like I said, everybody in here currently pretty much for the most part knows exactly who I am and what I'm about and how it all started. But hey, like let's kind of just get it get it here on, uh, on paper, I guess you can say. And if somebody wants to come back and watch this and if for whatever reason this blows up or whatever, you know, or if I blow up or whatever it is, you guys can come back to this and understand who I is. Um, so yeah, and I got the Yerba on deck. I'm already like halfway through because when I got done setting all this up, um, I was like, man, I'm a little, a little tired. So let me go ahead and as you can guys tell, I'm a little bit more sharp than I was last stream. Um, <laughs> so anyways, without further ado, uh let's start okay so edm trap 
uh edm trap is interesting man um it's i think it was one of the most revolutionary things at the time <clears throat> because uh, a lot of artists kind of in a way like i'd say it's like kind of like how house music is today where a lot of very mainstream artists are jumping on the house wave and uh i'd like to think of it more uh, a more le or less of a wave and more of just like a a big revolutionary moment in music where uh you know people are starting to expand their tastes uh all the way from the artists to the consumers and i think it's pretty interesting the way uh you know people follow suit but if something is done well which in this case you know since house music is really becoming uh the craze more people are receiving recognition that i actually know how to make that house music you know there's people out here who have been making house music for 10 years probably even longer and they never really got their like mainstream break um and now this is their time this is your time to shine and i'd like to think that's basically how uh trap music was. that's what trap music was for me um because it was something that i was very interested in edm and i was very interested in hip-hop uh, I produced both of those, but I found I, I really found a lane that I was like, wow, like this is something that uh, I truly believe uh, I can take my skill sets and pretty much make it happen. So, so basically, I'm gonna start. Okay, what, what's EDM trap? Or we'll start. We'll start with basically trap first. So trap uh, first comes from hip hop. Hip hop is basically you know comes in different many different forms you got west coast you got you know uh boom bap and you got like even now drill music uh just so many different styles of hip-hop and even like grime uh from the uk but trap music comes from atlanta comes from the south um even before trap was a thing like the south had a very specific sound it was mostly a lot of like synthesized drums and instruments and stuff like that and um we you know, I was really into like this, the basically South, you know, I was really into like the, the Boosies and the Jeezys and the, uh, and like, man, I'm like kind of drawing a blank right now, but there was a lot of like, you know, I was like the producer as producers wise, like I was really into drummer boy and I was into like, um, like the runners, which wasn't really even trapped like that, but, um, the South had a very specific sound and it was one that I was very gravitated towards. So uh, I began kind of in that style, you know, making music in general. I never really touched EDM for the first four years of me making music. Uh, I definitely like gained that trap formula uh, just from like what I actually like to make. So um, especially Young Jeezy, Young Jeezy was a big one for me, man. Like Young Jeezy had the craziest beat selection, man. Like if you go back to anything, like from when I first started making music in 07, uh, if you go and look back, man, like, phew, great, great, great stuff. So then after that, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, start to expand my taste a bit. And, uh, my dad would show me like some, like David Guetta and some like a really mainstream <laughs> dance music <laughs> and, um, and even like, you know, the Dirty Dutch kind of vibes and I was like, this is really cool. Like, I'm going to get into this. So started making that like, I'd say four or four and a half years into me producing. And that's kind of like, I guess you can say how I got into the EDM side of things. Uh, and EDM is way broader. <laughs> Electronic dance music, far more of a broad, uh, I guess you can say a broad genre or umbrella of genres than trap music is. Um edm or dance music and I, I and like just to get this just to basically get this straight uh when i refer edm uh, i'm not referring to the mainstream like because people hate sometimes the term edm some people do understand what i'm talking about when i say edm i'm basically uh to the non-edm listener they know what edm is they know it's dance music they know it's you know electronic because that's what it is electronic dance music um but people in a sense uh don't like that word but i completely understand uh but when i refer to edm i'm just referring to electronic music dance music that space in general because people who are on the outside understand what i'm talking about uh so i got into that uh like lmfao <laughs> like the super mainstream stuff because that was basically what i was saying is that uh where house music is today 
is where basically EDM and like that party kind of music was 10 to 12 years ago. Uh, when like LMFAO, Akon, Lady Gaga, and everybody was kind of like just on this big party house wave, you know, like big room kind of stuff. And it's nobody was on the trap wave. This was not, this wasn't happening yet. Uh, and when I say main, it wasn't happening in the mainstream. So, uh, and as a producer, you know, like a traditional producer, you know, you sometimes want to kind of chase what people are making in the mainstream because, you know, you want to get, you want a big hit. So when you get a big hit, you know, then, then cool, you can kind of go and get a little more experimental. But as a producer, especially for me starting out, I think I I was at the age of maybe like 18, 19. And I was just, you know, trying to follow suit, trying to make something like that. And, and then, so, uh, after just constantly chasing rappers, chasing hits, uh, just trying to like, I think the word chase is the best way to put it because it was a constant rat race man just constantly just trying to get it get it get a hit get a hit uh i would get a a big song with a with a with somebody that wouldn't even come out um and it was very what's up tc remix what's up um and it would just be very frustrating it would be very discouraging and i was like man like i i'm so tired of like having these almost moments and then they never actually happen so uh I think that was the moment where uh, I was, you know, scrolling on my Facebook and I would start to see people sharing SoundCloud links, which I already knew about SoundCloud for a while because uh, it, it, I kind of almost compared it to SoundClick because SoundClick is where you could sell your beats before BeatStars was the thing. Um, SoundClick, can you believe that? And so when I would see people, you know, posting links and stuff of SoundCloud, I was just thinking that they were just, you know, put uh putting up beats for them to like check out because that's what i would do you know i would upload to youtube my super old youtube account i would upload a beat every single day and people kind of saw my progress and that's what i thought that soundcloud was but little did i know that there's an entire it's an entire thing it's like Bandcamp. it was just, it was just a thing that like people people sometimes don't even know anything about and so at that point i kind of discovered okay there's there's a whole little thing going on here and I didn't, still hadn't seen Trap yet. Still hadn't seen what was going on yet. Um, it wasn't until Quick Story, which some of you guys already know, but is for people who uh, might come and see this later. Uh, just real quick story. I told this on Willie Joy's podcast. Um, but so basically one day or one night, I think it was like two in the morning with some friends. Uh, I think it was probably like four of us. We were in my mom's minivan. Uh, but Remedies Bandcamp went, I don't know, man, I gotta, I'm, I'm unorganized. I gotta get myself organized first if I'm going to do that. And so I had, I don't have waves of certain things, but anyways, back to the story. Uh, we were all in my mom's minivan, uh, in a McDonald's drive through and the person in front of the people in front of us, uh, they had their bass rocking. Uh, you could literally see the car in front of us, like jumping up and down from like people like you know, raging in there. And this is two in the morning. Now you can only hear the bass. You can't really hear what song is playing. And in my thought, I'm like, oh, this is like, they're listening to some like dubstep or something. And it wasn't until they rolled the window down to grab their order where I heard hi-hats and I heard like trap sounds, like tr regular trap music sounds like the snare and the hi-hats because in, in dubstep, you don't really hear those kind of hi-hats you hear more like the live kind of hi-hats and kind of stuff that's more you know just bigger sounds and not really so much the thinner uh trap sounds so i was like oh whoa hold on a second time out this this is what i didn't i couldn't i still couldn't even hear the whole thing so then pull out my <laughs> pull out my phone pull out shazam and it's original dawn remix by foster domus which I mean, a lot of people discover trap music through that song, but for me, it was kind of almost like an act, an accident that it, I mean, I probably would have discovered it on YouTube later, but it was in a McDonald's drive through And I just kind of had like a huge moment there because I was already making dubstep, but it was pretty amateur and I still hadn't really got the drums down with it. Like there's a very specific way they have drums compressed and there's a very specific way that they do that. And I hadn't really got that down yet. Um, so when I heard trap and I heard that they were, you know, uh, like Je the Jet and John's, uh, turn up where it was kind of almost like a dubstep sounding kind of thing. Um, that's when I discovered like EDM trap music. 
uh, which at the time was, which is hilarious. I called it trap step <laughs> because I kind of associated it with dubstep because I felt I had very similar uh, structure to dubstep songs. So I called it trap step for like a good six months. Um, which is completely understandable. There are some people that call it a trap style um, because I knew trap music as the original where it actually came from, which was from more on the hip hop side. So once I found that song, jumped into YouTube, the YouTube had all the uh, su suggested stuff um, and uh, it, I just went down the rabbit hole from there, found out about Earl Grime, Yellow Claw, Jet and Johns, uh, Hudson Mohawk, all those guys, and I was like mind blown. And like the funny thing about this trap music is that it seemed so underdeveloped. It was like so forward thinking, but still underdeveloped. Like they were like as far as like s mix downs weren't all that great. Uh, there was still like some kind of corniness to it a bit, but like it was again so forward thinking. And I'm like, yo, like this could be huge. And uh, I was just thinking to myself, this is this is 2012, or I'm sorry. This might be the beginning of 2013. And I'm thinking to myself, man, like this is something that I could definitely make happen because I was already making EDM music. I was making like EDM remixes of like Rihanna songs. And they were like more like this house, like kind of dance the night away, like J-Lo kind of stuff. And I was like, this is not, this is not what I want to do. So when I found out about Trap, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Good, good lane for me to jump into. So uh did some more research kind of like did a little mimicking uh <laughs> umbrella ella um did a little bit of research kind of did some mimicking try to figure out the structures try to get it going and, and let's be honest like my first few trap songs were absolutely terrible and trash you know um but i'd say like maybe my fifth one was the beat to mosh pit by foster Domus, which hey we can come out and say this man until we've gotten to this point. Uh, and it was it was absolutely insane uh, that, you know, I had made this song. I put it put it up on my SoundCloud, got like 200 views uh, in like six months. No, I'd say maybe like three or four months. No kind of attention whatsoever. People were not tapped in for nothing. Um, so I was like, man, like coming from the rap world where at that time I had already produced for like Diddy, French, uh, all these big rappers and like kind of i've already had like a good momentum in that area but again it goes back to like you have to chase them down chase them down chase them down and like you can have hundreds of songs with the biggest artists ever but they might not ever come out they like you know they cut it and they move on to the next thing um so at the time while i was like hey well you know if i can get to these rappers i can get to some of these trap artists you know so i was hitting up floss i was tweeting at them like almost every other day uh, like yo, let let's talk. Hit me up. I want to send you some stuff. I wasn't even trying to really send them stuff to play, per se. Uh, I was just sending them stuff so that we can work on a song together. Because again, this goes back to where I felt some of the sound was a little underdeveloped. Um, collab, bro. Yep, exactly. And so, so I kind of wanted to like be an asset to some of these trap artists, which I think one of the only people where I felt uh, definitely had this sound on lock and was way cleaner than a lot of the other people was mr bro safari that man if you guys don't know who he is check him out bro safari he doesn't do this kind of, he doesn't do this kind of music anymore but go to his back catalog go to everything from 2012 to 2016 mams was ahead of this ahead of ahead of the curve anyways uh so which he was definitely one of the first people to ever give me uh like a chance next to floss um you know one of the biggest songs I have is Remix with Bro. And so it, it was it was huge. So back to explaining trap music. So EDM trap music, in my opinion, especially at that time, uh, was the merging of, you know, two genres in a very natural way. Um, where it's like, okay, we're gonna take what is hot in the in the EDM space and we're take we're gonna take what's hot in the hip hop space. And let's be honest, like in hip hop, trap music was starting to become a thing uh, because of like people like Waka Flocka, 
um where it was like okay these two worlds can completely coexist because in the trap world you know and like with with the waka flocka and like lex luger and like those kind of songs like you can party to those songs and you can get lit to those songs while also these you know dubstep songs and these kind of more like party house and like el mafeo stuff you also get lit to that you also go crazy to that so it was kind of like you can merge these two and like they they give you the same uh result which is basically people turning up uh and oh yeah and like future too like a lot of people were like really blowing up at that time so it was really easy to kind of merge the two because they were both very similar and they gave you the similar result of like if you were to dj at a party or dj something or even play a mix which is why the remedy mixes were such a thing because i had so many songs that i would turn up to that are hip-hop and so many songs that i would turn up to that are dubstep or trap or you know even like house like big room house and i and they give you the same effect so there was an abundance there and there was like just a lot of like unexplored space and i i found i mean i really like went in on it because you know i loved both genres so much and that was really my lane and uh that's really where i thrived and people ask all the time like you know what is uh what what can you take out of what's your favorite thing about that time about track and i think it was just be the abundance of music and how much music there was and how much was still just evolving 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 and how many artists would just keep coming up keep coming up keep coming up and my favorite part about all that is soundcloud itself the fact that you can tour off of soundcloud and just repost you know you can have unofficial edits bootlegs all that stuff and tour off of those because you had these huge DJs playing playing this and everybody kind of tapped in. Now, another uh, point in this EDM trap discussion is that there was a lot of hip-hop artists, a lot of mainstream artists jumping into that, that vibe as well. Um, you know, HUD, Hudmo did some Kanye stuff, um, the whole Harlem Shake, uh, well, Har nobody really got on a Harlem Shake, but there was also like Travis Scott jumping, you know, Travis Scott and Metro Boomin, and like you even had like these like mainstream rap guys like jumping in and and going and and, and hopping on the train, um, and that and ASAP Ferg and you know Uzi uh, with with this with the Carnage track, you know, you had all these artists that don't need to really get on that stuff getting on it like that let's look let's look at it today in 2022 that's like getting like a money bag yo or like a like who's who's another really hot guy right now like a like a little baby or like a future on one of the on a trap trip on a trap song you know what i'm saying like they're not gonna do that they're absolutely not gonna do that today so that that was the the golden era was the fact that you had people from an industry that they're not necessarily in jumping into that um and it's it's a beautiful thing man like i definitely miss those times uh shout out to a track by the way a track really like helped make that happen uh with his fool's gold day off and stuff like that um and just really kind of including everybody same with diplo with the mad decent block parties uh having all these rappers and all these like non non-traditional or these traditional people in a non-traditional space um, which is, you know, bridging the gap. But that's uh, scarce right now. We don't have any of that right now. I think uh, really it's just you're either in the you're either in the electronic music space or you're in the rap space. You know, Rolling Loud is is a festival that only really has rap music. I'd say it's ninety nine percent rappers being booked. Uh, and then you have EDC, same thing, ninety nine percent you know electronic music artists getting booked uh but then there's you know there's yet to be a f i think hard summer is probably the closest thing to that or like Lollapalooza. but even then it's like it's not really a merged thing it's kind of just a big huge festival where everybody's kind of like there um i i still don't think that there is currently a festival uh or at least an event it doesn't even have to be a festival it can just be a one stage event where it's kind of just everything that's like happening and even like newer guys too even people popping out um and i think that's where I actually i got a whole lot of recognition especially out here in florida was me being able to play the the, the block parties uh because you know 
I was playing what was going on. Uh, so, <clears throat> by the way, if anybody in the chat wants to like input what they, how they got into trap or what they believe trap music is, you know, uh, by all means, you know, I like to have discussion. I don't want to be here talking to myself, which it is what it is. <laughs> um, but. And then also here in the in the title says uh, what is EDM trap music and its current state. Uh, EDM trap music has evolved uh, so much if in the last five to six years. It's actually pretty insane. Um, trap music had a pretty solid sound like once once it hit 2015 and 2016. Uh, I like to think that it really like solidified itself uh, with like you know people like Boombox Cartel um you know party thieves and like uh you know other artists and even like bro safari was still doing his thing but like a lot of artists were really solidifying the trap sound and it really kind of like giving it uh that that upgraded sound that i was that i was originally looking for in 2013. Uh, a lot of people who were very good in sound design and there there was a formula there to really learn from you know there it was it was very uh it, it was pretty easy to pick up on uh, and then there was just so many artists like just out here doing it. Uh, so from, I'd say 2015 and 16, even 17, uh, things were really not changing too much. I think even all the way down to like Jack U, uh, Skrillex and Diplo's project where that had some trap influence as well. Um, where that was very mainstream, even like, you know, Skrillex jumped into the trap, uh, the trap train and it went pretty crazy. So, I really think that uh, it was around 2017 when things started to change uh, more into like rhythm, which rhythm, not the not the Jamaican rhythm, not like reggae rhythm, but rhythm uh, being uh, a subgenre of dubstep, which kind of has a very minimal sound, which in my opinion, kind of like can coincide with, with trap music a bit, but the... Uh, the ri the rhythm the rhythm was different uh from trap music itself uh shaky beat 2016 and 17 was like that i discovered trap music with those terrible spinny three uh, text 3d intros uh i'm not sure if i know what you're talking about i got into trap mainly uh from artists playing at festivals like layback loot afrojack just dropping trap out of nowhere in their sets i think that's so i think that's some of the most fire way to um to like discover trap music is like again like when you have a mainstream artist or a huge artist that kind of already paved the way through through their stuff uh or through like basically what they don't do or what they do and then they drop something they don't do and kind of like really introducing something because it's like it's like having like you know you have this artist that's got like ten thousand people watching them you know and then that's an that's a real audience to introduce things to and no, I think about it. I definitely got to really like sit down and like make a list of artists. Uh, laid back loop put me on a Jersey club. To, exactly. You know, um, it, it, it's like you already know what to expect from him. So when he drops something that you don't expect and you dig it, it's going to make you want to really like figure out what's going on and, and like kind of tap in with what, what it is, you know, and uh I wish that had happened to me. I wish that was the way that I discovered trap, but I think the way that I discovered trap is kind of funny, not gonna lie. Um, just being at a McDonald's drive through. Um, but anyways, trap music current trap music's current state is definitely very different uh, from where it was uh, eight years ago, which I feel so old saying eight years ago. <laughs> um and uh it sucks but you know music has to evolve things have to trends have to change and trends have to come and go um was trap music a trend in a sense yes it was um is it going to come back the way it was in 2014 90 percent no 10 percent yes uh, i say 90 percent no because um it's not gonna sound like what it sounded like uh because hip-hop itself is gonna change soon um and electronic music itself is going to change soon and we don't know uh by the time that you know because at the end of the day that's that's and this is kind of my interpretation of it is that hip-hop music 
or I'm sorry, the genre of EDM trap music, which it might not even be called trap music, but at that time was basically a merging of two cultures. Uh, and that's hip hop and electronic music. And that's what I believe trap music is. And if we want to use, uh, you know, a different word, I would say maybe electronic hip hop. Um, but that's still kind of a little too broad. But uh, that was my interpretation of what trap is. It was a little more than like, okay, trap music came from, you know, Atlanta and it has to sound like that. Or like, no, uh, I, I really believe that it was the merging, going back to what I was saying, how some of these events and part you could play a party and you could be playing both of these types of uh, musics and it would, it would be perfectly fine. Nobody would be like, ah, oh, turn this EDM stuff off or, oh, turn this rap shit off. Like people were just turning up. And I'm not saying that that doesn't already exist, but it's not as prevalent and it's not as uh, huge as it was. And it, and it will be soon, you know. Um, I think we're actually reaching that point right now with house music where a lot of artists are uh, on the house wave. Um, but it's it's still not production wise. It's still not a merging of hip hop culture and um electronic music culture i think it's more like mainstream artists and hip-hop artists pop artists are jumping onto this edm wave instead of them to kind of meeting halfway that is what i believe trap music is and what the revival of trap music is not necessarily going to maybe be trap maybe it's going to be even house maybe or we don't know um and maybe you know this discussion is a little different because there's probably somebody out here that's already uh basically saying exactly what i'm saying where there's the merging of two cultures through maybe house music because house music actually did come from urban areas uh it came from detroit and it came from urban people um and so maybe that is what's going on right now i'm just kind of not seeing it in that sense but which kind of goes back to exactly what i was saying that it's not coming back the way we think it is through trap music but hey we don't know uh, maybe one day somebody is just going to go viral off of something that we can coin as trap. And then, you know, people hop on that in the hip hop realm, like maybe like a little baby or something like that. I mean, hey, that's a goal of mine. Maybe one day, you know, I can sign with a record label that gives me an outrageous budget. And I'm, hey, I'm going to get some little baby features some, you know, some Nardo Wick features, some NBA Young Boy features on some trap music. Um, we, we don't know. But but I, I do believe that right now, the current state of trap music is more just leaning into electronic music itself and not leaning into hip hop. Uh, it definitely has a hip hop uh, structure, I guess you can say in some ways, but it's not it's not anything like how it was eight years ago. Um, who's really jump? Who's really like uh, leading that? I'd say the Sable Valley guys, you know, Um rl grime has uh, very much held himself up well and being that he held himself up well he's able to hold up a lot of other artists that uh follow in his footsteps and when i say follow in his footsteps they were really like playing and creating rl grime type beats <laughs> i use the word type beats uh you know like a producer would <clears throat> Especially with new sounds being popularized, like the Elenium sound. Yes, absolutely. Um, like the cry, st the cry, what is it called? Cry banging. <laughs> uh, um, which, by the way, guys, like the video, like this video. You know, want to get 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 the algorithm helping me out here. Um, cry step. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. Yeah, this is just something, you know, so if you got, you know, to anybody who's coming and watching this later on, uh, you know, that was my, what, 30 minute rant of, uh, how long, what is this? Yeah, about 30, 30 minute rant of, uh, what trap music is and, uh, it's current state, I guess you can say is a little, uh, harder to discuss because it's, it's ever changing and, uh, I'd like to think it's more analog uh, right now. It's um, and when I say analog, I mean it's more synthesis uh, and less like kind of um, you know simple sounds and like vocal chop stuff. I think it's more like kind of just like have some really really cool sound design, 
uh get yourself a synth that you can you know rewire stuff and change your knobs and do all that cool stuff um and just really tight mixes and uh it's like almost dubstep in my complete opinion like i think it's almost like dubstep uh where you're almost required to have required to have a good mix down um which you can go back to 2012 trap music 2013 even 14 trap music those mix downs were absolute trash but people would go off to them because it was more the the vibe and the the idea of it um and the context because people people have a good imagination you know like they have people don't give themselves enough credit that they they perceive this as like yo this is fire this is dope because they're not sitting there thinking like oh yeah that's a great mix no the normal person does not think that it's usually other producers that's why all, all my all my fans are producers <laughs> because because i focus so much on mix down and making it sound good that uh all the other producers are like yo bro how do i get a mix like that instead you know and i'm, I'm not really thinking as much which i should which i mean I, I have some pretty good ideas but i think uh i really save myself with uh good mix downs or uh, you know, good dynamic mixes. Minus one, that being me. All right, I'd say like if you were to line up a hundred people, eighty of them are producers. Maybe ninety. Um, which is fine with me, you know, because uh, at least you know, there's if I were to meet them in person, like we could hit it off and have a great conversation because. Uh, I'm like pretty antisocial. <laughs> I don't know how to talk normal talk. I only know how to talk about music. Uh, anyways, uh, so if you guys have anything else you want to say about that, uh, you know, because I like talking about this kind of stuff. And <clears throat> but quick announcement: uh, I will be uh, releasing a mix with fucks with it um they are a trap blog or not trap it's like independent edm music let's uh it's actually a fucks with it fucks with it uh yeah so y'all check out fucks with it they i i really like what they do um they uh they have uh you know guest mixes i will be there um, I think I think I'll be their next guest mix. If not, then the, the one after that. Um, it'll be a thirty minute mix. Maybe I'll try to push it to thirty five minutes. But uh, yeah, uh, it should be out to the end of the month. Uh, I think uh, we agreed on September twenty eighth. So a week and a day from now, eight days from now, um, bro, your mixes have got me through some workouts. A hey, I don't listen. I gotta listen to my own mixes to work out. I, well, I don't listen to music when I work out. Um, I try to uh, find a way to just stay pumped without music. Because <laughs> whenever I do listen to music, like I don't know, it's I don't know. But hey, maybe one day I'll try it. I get to try it. But yeah, you guys check out uh, "Fucks with It." Um, uh, also doing an interview as well. Uh, they asked some pretty cool questions. They asked some great questions. Um, and uh, yeah, they, if you guys don't already know, I'm sure most of you guys here know, but but whoever doesn't, um, yeah, support these guys because uh, we're very scarce on blogs and write-ups and stuff like that because we're in the world of, uh, ooh, my herb. <laughs> I love this thing. There's not a lot of write-ups anymore, man. We're in a different we're in a different space of consumption, you know. People consume music completely differently now. Um it's all about TikTok, it's all about Instagram reels, uh quick stuff, you know. And I mean, hopefully that will change one day. I don't know if it's just a it's this generational thing. I don't know if it's these big social media companies at the top that are like changing this shit up. I've never read blogs, but I'll check it out. <clears throat> well, uh, whenever we have this done, um, whenever this is done and released, you know, uh, I'll stream and I'll, uh, you know, review it for you guys and 
read the question because i i mean it's not a, i mean even like me i'm not much of a reader kind of more of a listener uh i've only listened to really audiobooks i don't sit and actually read books um i like listen to audiobooks <laughs> which shout out to audiobooks um i miss when hybrid trap was fresh uh i like the word fr- i like the word fresh i like how you use that word um because that is definitely um that's definitely something that uh i feel that we're missing is the freshness of it and i can't sit here and like not complain but i can't sit here and be like damn like there's no fresh hybrid or fresh trap or fresh whatever when there's such a scarcity on inspiration itself the inspiration the reason and and this is with any genre the reason why music like house right now is blowing up is because of the amount of inspiration you can draw from some of the best of the best guys are making this kind of music so you have something to reference you have something to be inspired by you have something to basically you know create off of something that's already so good now because and it kind of has a snowball effect where it's like okay you got a bunch of great people making it and then you got another great person making it and then it just kind of it's it tumbles and that's where trap music as was at one point that's why it was so fresh and the reason why it's not fresh now is because people are taking the formula of when it was fresh and it's like hey man we've already heard this it's already been regurgitated it's already been done so that's why it's not fresh it's not new it's not like innovative because we're going off of what was the fresh sound and it's like we're still we're, we're referencing something that happened six years ago seven years ago there's nobody really like and i'll be honest one of the most i'd say fresh sounds right now is like the sd water boys which is like iso exo knock to rem k uh frost top uh i know i'm missing a bunch of guys but they're they 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 kind of have like all right cool this is the, this is like a sound that we can that we can stay and stand on um and then kind of they all like in a in a sense but but let's be honest like how far can they take it you know and this is not me uh saying like oh well you know they're they're not gonna get any but no we don't know yet because it hasn't really been done i don't know if they have unreleased music that they haven't really necessarily played yet but i've listened to their sets and they have a sound that they stand on um but is anybody else gonna do that is anybody else gonna are they gonna follow that formula now so you know it's 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 very interesting the way that uh sounds can evolve when there's an abundance of said sound um so yes i miss when things were fresh but i but but we we have to uh find ways to ins- get inspired uh and not through means of uh you know music that's already out we got to f- just be creative uh and that's how some of these genres begin is people who weren't following uh what everybody else was doing which is something that i'm 100 percent guilty of i'm always doing things that uh you know i am because like let's be honest as a, as a traditional producer which is just basically who somebody who makes beats or creates music uh for other artists and not for their own artist project which is i'm you know i like to think ricky remedy is basically an artist that i produce for what a bezzy um basically as a you know as a traditional producer you're gonna follow what other artists are doing because you know you're making you're you're following their vision you have something that they want and or you kind of envision what it is that they're talking about or what they're trying to accomplish musically and you want to follow it and so as a traditional producer it's pretty pretty easy to follow you know fall into that like what everybody else is doing what everybody's doing and that's like completely that's totally justified but as an artist you kind of have to like you can follow suit a bit but you you got to stand out in some possible way and um you know i i think people just as producers just want to they they want to have, have more of a chance to make it they want to have more of a chance to be listened to so some people are scared to just create something out of thin air and not actually have a formula to follow and that's just kind of just going off their own creativity and like following with it it's very risky but hey some people really make it that way and that's how genres even begin i sort of feel 
like too much observing watching others kills creativity yeah absolutely 100 percent. everything in moderation you know it's it's it i think it's healthy to to not just sit in your own creativity and uh, and not just completely go off of what you think because you know you're not the only person in this world um but then also like you said don't don't observe too much because then you're trying to follow something so uh to what you're saying look what happens with tanner when he tried to switch up with visceral yeah i mean that's what i'm saying it's really risky um that's why maybe he could have had a better chance if uh he you know had a different alias um which he did with the whole uh what's his name uh what's his rapper name again uh which by the way guys like the video if you haven't uh show some love like this video so that the algorithm can show this terry there you go uh he could have maybe did something maybe he could have called uh um visceral that could have been the name of his artist project but i don't know it's definitely a risky thing man like and so as an artist it's really hard to kind of switch things up as a producer you are free to do whatever you want you are absolutely free to make any kind of genre or hop on whatever it is we got chisholm in here what up boy chilling man we just talking uh I'm showing the fucks with it uh, website because I will be featured um, next week. I think that's next Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday. I don't even know Tuesday. <laughs> uh, next Wednesday. So yeah, um, shout out to them for that. Yeah, no, they're, they're really tapped in with a lot of underground guys, and that's why I love them, because uh, they're, they're doing what was a big thing, like, 10 years ago, when people found out about artists through, like, blogs, write-ups, and not necessarily them, like, going to the websites and being like, oh, who's new, who's new, or what's going on? I think it's more just, like, how it kind of spread amongst other blog, blog sites, and uh, it just kind of had, like, a web effect um but yeah it's uh it's interesting remember this <laughs> do i remember that's how i was able to tour that's how i was able to to basically t tour <laughs> the world because i would just post something and i would get 100k views and 100k 100k plays in a week just me posting i didn't have to call nobody i didn't have to hit nobody up it just happened because people saw it and they reposted it. Now the the repost communities themselves is yes, you're absolutely right. That's what that's what ruined it because um, there was I guess agreements that were made where people would basically post, and then as soon as they post, there was like spam reposts, and it's like okay, we get it, the song is out, we get it. It wasn't as organic. Most people found out exactly exactly um which even i'll be honest like i'm sort of guilty of that because in the beginning uh when it before it was called repost network it was called like edm dot edm dot net or something like that not edm.com but it was like something dot net and there was a trap music one where it had a lot of followers it had like i think like 300k followers and nobody had really hopped onto it like that i was like oh okay okay like let me jump and this is when i had like the floss collab already and like the bro safari stuff so i was like oh this is gonna be easy for me to to like send them stuff and them actually enjoy it and want to repost it so then i had uh so it, but this was in the beginning man this was way in the beginning and then and then finally i i, I peep game everyone is guilty of the repost game when i managed x ski we were running that up yeah man because it's like that that was the easiest way i guess you can say to like get everybody on the same page at the same exact time it's not as easy to do that now because there's so there's so much uh distribution uh amongst different networks like tiktok instagram you know spotify playlisting uh even youtube like there's so many different like levels to it now that like 
that's just another transaction. That's another transaction. That's another transaction. Or that's another conversation to have another con- like when in like SoundCloud, it was like, that's the platform right there. It's all right then, right then and there. And then like, you're good. So it was a lot easier uh, at that time because, you know, Spotify was, which is so crazy how some people were like, yo, Spotify's going to ruin it. <clears throat> but yeah. We live in a we live in a different world now, and uh, I don't know what's to come. I really don't. I don't know how things are going to change. I don't know if it's uh, we don't know. Uh, but all I know is I, I continue to adapt. Um, I just know it's a little bit a dif- little bit more difficult than it is than it was uh, you know back in fifteen and sixteen. Um, but I was definitely yeah man. SoundCloud was how I was able to tour man. Um, I think today the only way you can really tour is if you have uh, label releases, uh, you have collaborated collaborations with huge artists. <clears throat> yeah, bro. Shortly before they got in a deal with Empire, I was uh, last time X went to jail. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Empire definitely uh, was. I guess you can say like pretty much going through the, the SoundCloud libraries. Uh, <laughs> You know, because it was easy. Because, like, at the end of the day, like, a lot of people can get reposts. But if you have a catalog, which uh, which most of the time labels are really looking for, like, if you're able to have a back catalog and you're not just kind of like a one hit thing, uh, it's it's you're 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 golden, you know. And I'm pretty sure like Empire was like more tapped, at, like, because like Empire is like not as traditional of a, of a label. Maybe maybe they are now, but at the time, bro like not they weren't like a universal or they weren't like an atlantic they weren't like you know uh you know warner and all these other they they weren't like that they were they were kind of like tapped in and being like okay we know what we're gonna do we know you know we know how we're gonna how we're gonna come with this one um yeah so I think I'm going to start cooking up in a second. I think maybe like just talk for like another five more minutes and then we can start cooking something up. But I definitely wanted to get some discussion because, uh, you know, long form content. Empire needs to be investigated, but no one wants to talk about that. <laughs> hey, man. Some fishy stuff, man. Some fishy stuff. But all I know is when it comes to record labels, man, they just got too much money and power. It's uh, it's easy for for things to go to go under, man. They got some wild contracts. I'll say that. That's what I'm saying. They knew what they were doing. Finding SoundCloud rappers. They knew what they were doing. Amount of tunes they were, bro. That's why I'm saying. If they know you got a back catalog, bro. That that's that they know. They're like, okay, we got them. Because. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they're like, okay, because like if you have one song that's out, eh, they're like, is this gonna be a good deal? Because this, it's still a bad deal for for a record label to sign an artist that can't really like at least pump out music. I think Juice World is a perfect example of that too. Like Juice had, bro, like that man can make thousands of songs in a fucking month. You know what I'm saying? So it's a good deal for them because they're like, okay, cool. We're going to make them pump out music. But they're going to like kind of keep it just short enough of the amount of music that he needs to put out. It's crazy, man. I'm not going to I'm not going to do too much exposing right now um of these labels, but but Empire definitely they they do what they were doing, man. They know what they know what they're doing. They're they are very uh conniving. Um it's a uh, a lot of I mean bro a lot of a lot of majors are but they came different. <laughs> um I don't know man, you know. We we definitely got to we got to I don't know man. The labels are always going to bring back local libraries. Man I don't know man. I don't know how this new generation is going to like really cuz like bro like this this new generation, like everything's happening on the phone now, bro. Like it's all about convenience. People are not sitting at their computers as much these days. 
Ricky, we gotta cook up soon and back in the city. Let me know, bro. Uh, actually, I don't even think I texted you. Oh, you know, I did, I did. Yeah, just hit me, hit me with a text, man, and we'll make it happen. Um, bring back local, bro, like, I don't know how this new generation is gonna be, bro, like, yeah, we kind of be sitting at our computers when we're playing video games and shit, or, like, if we're kind of just, like, doing, like, I think Rare, I think that's why it's funny, it's ironic that your name is Rare, because it's, you're a rare occurrence to this new generation, bro, like, you, you're, you're very much, like, kind of how, you know, you appreciate, like, other ways of, uh, you know, consuming things and consuming music and, but but this generation man and the normies and i call them normies because everybody it's in here is special the name isn't just aesthetic <laughs> but but i'm talking about when i say normies i mean regular people that that you know have that go out and go to their job their nine to fives you know and and uh you know Normies make me sick, bro. Or just don't, don't basically, and I don't even want to say there's that if you're nine to five, you're automatically a normie. No, I'm just saying like that people who usually have a routine and kind of like just live almost like this, like normal lifestyle, they don't really ever like expand outside of that. They kind of just have their way of doing things and that's just about it. Um, and so that kind of goes back to why I even brought that up is because people are not going to sit for one second and be like, you know what? It probably is better if I sit and have local libraries and just download stuff and just have it all like not everybody was really thinking like that which is it's unfortunate but they're not you plugged in the matrix and content with it hey man that's a hey, that's that that's deep man I'm not a I don't think I'm ready for the deep talks yet maybe maybe, maybe we'll get some more maybe a couple more streams in we can start having deeper conversations but uh this is just me basically saying hey man like the consumption of music uh you you have to pay attention to that because if you're a producer or and when i say producer like i mean like producer consumer if you're a producer if you're somebody who's creating you have to understand how people consume this music and, and consume content in general and that's why i have this youtube channel for long form that's why i have my tiktok and instagram reels for short form um because it's like the i people consume things differently they they there's it's almost like to their personality if you like a track by a loss of you'll never know you never know when it, it'll disappear yeah we got caliber in the building what up my boy like the video by the way guys uh we got eight likes let's try to get 20. um but yeah we about to cook up i'm like three quarters into my yerba Let's get it. Let's get it. 10 likes. Nice. All right. Just 10 more likes and uh, I'll be a happy camper. All right. Here we are. FL11. <clears throat> so let me actually show you guys. So I posted on my Instagram yesterday and TikTok, which, by the way, follow me on TikTok. Uh, I'm having an app super slow growth, man. I'm really trying to like grow on there, and I don't even know if I have to make a new TikTok and kind of start over because sometimes, like, depending on how your first like six or seven videos do, it's gonna kind of determine how the rest of your videos are gonna do. Um, you can't make new accounts. This is FL11. Uh, I use 20, um, like 30 percent of the time 40 percent of the time uh i use 11 because it's way quicker uh for me you know um but there's a lot of features that 20 has that 11 doesn't have uh i usually when it comes to like mixing music i'll use 20 uh or usually when it just comes down to like more creative music uh you know i'll use 20 because there's a lot of plugins a lot of stuff in there that uh that FL11 doesn't have, but if I'm in like the studio cooking up with another artist, I'm definitely gonna use 11 because I'm like really fast on that and I just kinda wanna get the idea out of the way first. Um, and then when it comes to fine tuning and all that extra shit, I'll do it in a, I'll do it in 20. But yeah, when I'm on stream, I just use 11 cause you know, it's kinda, I don't want people to be sitting here while I'm like kinda trying to like figure out where something is at cause the layout is significantly different. 
Have you ever tried Ableton? Yes, twice. And both times I fell on my face and wanted to go crawl in a corner and cry. <clears throat> it's uh it's it's difficult. Ricky goes caveman when oh yeah, man. I'm gonna have a stream one day where you guys are watching me use Ableton, bro, and you're gonna see you're gonna be like, are you really a producer, bro? Like, do you even know how to make music? So let me show you guys my project uh, that I posted yesterday. <clears throat> Which uh, definitely got, uh, I'm definitely gonna finish this one. I know I'm always saying, oh, I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna finish that, I'm gonna finish this. But no, I'm actually, uh, this is definitely something that I feel people enjoyed. Um, okay also 11 has the bars well they discontinued them in 11 but you're still able to bring them back into 11. Ooh. Why does this sound mono? Okay, it's not. I'm gonna call this Elevate. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good name. I don't know, for some reason, and I, I noticed this in my post too, but the mix sounds like off. And like, this is not how I, when I was making it, it didn't sound like the snare is fucking loud as shit. Yes, the vocal chops are very remedy. Um, yeah, I I definitely gotta go in back in on this mix, which like I hate the fact that I have to go back in on it because usually I mix as I go along and I like going back in on it like sometimes just makes it worse. Um, let's mute the drums. Like what I could do is I could probably like bounce out, bounce all this out. 
and then just put it just put all new drums on because this is I like the mix here of like the actual instrumentation. This kind of has like a mix of like everything. This has like a bound startup 227, like all the, all of those kind of mixed into one. This 227 with the art, the arpeggiated synth, and then like the vocal chops, like startup and bound, and then just the epicness of just all of them put together. Yeah, no, this is cool, man. Let me uh, go ahead and save this as a. Uh muted so drums are muted all right cool let's uh let's see do i have anything else i want y'all to see real quick let's see uh oh yeah 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 so speaking of trap this is actually perfect on the subject of edm trap music one of the classics uh we all know this one no not gold ricky remedy gold Not that one. So that was like one of the most played songs for like five years in the trap world, in the EDM trap world. That right there was a staple for sure. And so I heard it the other day and I was like, why don't I like kind of like give it like a updated kind of thing, a updated kind of vibe. So oh, this is, this is, it was all right. I, I, I listened to it the next day and I was like, eh, this is cool, but I think it's, I think it's all right. I think it, it could definitely use some work, but. saying just like yeah he said a few times that he wants build-ups too wait what you mean but a little uh, a little break fills are fine yeah yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, not keep it as, re not keep it as, like, repetitive as the original, you know? But, uh... Oh, he's trying to get into Patreon. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I gotta... <laughs> like, I just be starting with the drop. I don't be, like, putting... I, I don't be, like, having to... Once I have the finished records... Or once I... Because, like, I'm gonna put this in the fucks with it mix. So I still have to do the build-up um for this one and then uh and then it'll be good to go I'm, I'm working pretty much all this week oh yeah by the way rare september edit is gonna be uh uploaded tomorrow uh in my tiktok and uh reels and then i'll put it in the uh put it in the patreon as well but yeah that's that so let's let's make some uh let's make a trap song Let's make an EDM trap song. It's 12 likes. We need eight more likes, 20 likes. Let's try to get them to 20 likes. 
I'm almost done with my yerba. Kind of hot in here. All right. So how can we go about this? Can we go like, we can go 130 again, like how we just had it. Maybe we'll do that. We can, we can, we can do 130s. Um, what's like a, what's like a good reference? What's a good reference? What's like, what's like one of the golden, <clears throat> is Rhythm dead yet? I haven't been, into, been paying it yet. It's not dead, but it's definitely not as insanely popular as it was like in like 2018. I liked my producing my trap at 110, 125. I would love to like produce it at that too, which, oh man, let me, uh, let's see, Ricky Remedy 100. Let's see if it's still, yeah, let's go. Oh no, ads. No, no, no ads. Not for you. This is like a 118, I think. Damn, why is my green screen like? I got it. Damn, I gotta fix the green screen. Did I say eight years, bro? Oh my god. Which, by the way, this is like so forward. This is like a head. This was a head. Nobody had made a like trap song at that speed. Bro, that snare is crazy. Damn. Thirty trap. That was like one eighteen trap, but we'll do one thirty. We'll do one thirty today. But that classic, like, saw synth two thousand fourteen was bro. Yes, bro. We're in twenty twenty two. It's bro. This it's killing me, bro. It it's killing me. It's killing me to know how long ago that was, bro. That's why, bro, I be saying, bro, I peaked. Ricky Remedy peaked in 2015, 2016, bro. That was six, seven years ago, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Bro. I peaked. Now, am I going to come back with something else? Probably, but I don't know. It's not going to sound like that. I'll tell you that much. No, ain't nobody going to be listening to that no more, bro. I'm just trying, just trying to be realistic here. <clears throat> 13 likes, 7 more likes. Let's try to get 20 likes before the end of this track. Alright, let's go through some of the Remedy kit. Maybe we'll just make it easy. We don't have to do full-on sound design today. Which, by the way, this is from Countdown, I think? No, not Countdown. Yeah, Countdown. I think, right? That's what... Countdown, Remedy Countdown. Did I ever, wait, is it not? Thumbs up, bud, keep killing. Hey, my boy, Gorilla Flicks. When's month three dropping? Month three dropping, is, month three 
is dropping uh i think sometime next week um i'm like halfway through um it's really not going to be super interesting it's kind of more like producer p- producer tools uh like basically like hi-hat loops uh just loops um what else like just like kind of quick even like midi stuff uh yeah, like hi hat hi hat loops, drum loops, uh, kick patterns, just patterns and stuff. You know, stuff. It's kind of yeah. It's 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 a it's a tool. You know, and then and then next next month will be uh, probably more like one shot hits, kind of like the first one. <clears throat> exactly, exactly. Because bro, I was actually on a lesson with somebody, and uh, they had told they had told me, yeah, look, I I I, I use your uh your drum loops from the remedy kit. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even know people even use those. <laughs> so I was like, OK, I'll make some more drum loops. Uh, we're at 14 likes, six more likes. Let's get the 20 likes. Like the video. Shout out to everybody that's been jumping in today. Um, we're about to start some EDM trap beat type beat right now. Uh, we're at 130 BPM. Just going through some sounds from the remedy kit. See what I could. Uh... This sound is also from Return. These are from Go Stupid. Yeah, I, uh, a lot of my kits I use, I put in sounds that from our from my actual songs. So, we're done. We finished the yerba. Let's do the old ring modulation, see how some of these sound. Oh, no, no, no. Let me connect my uh, MIDI controller so that I'm not using my my keyboard. Fifteen likes, let's go! Five more likes. Appreciate y'all and engaging. Thank you. We're trying, you know, we're trying to keep it consistent here, you know. Um, and to anybody who. Uh, is now watching the stream after missing it uh hit the like button when you do watch we're trying you know we're trying we're trying to grow here man let's see oh shit Okay, something that I usually like to do too. Um, so like I'll grab like, I'll just do 808 from here. <clears throat> Citrus, which I have like an 808 saved. Um, and usually I'm like, all right, what is my bass note gonna be? And then I'll just basically like bass uh, my sound off of that. So usually these are my favorite uh, bass ranges is, uh, what is that, is, is that E? I don't, I don't even know music theory. Uh, that is a, a an F. This is an E. So F E uh, D flat. <laughs> Bro, how do I not know yet? Uh, so these are my ranges. I'll even go to B sometimes, but uh, so I'll do like maybe D. That was D sharp. <laughs> so I'll do D. And then I'll, uh,
Um, let me throw some R base on here since R base is goaded. Um, R base is also OP. I'll clip it. I see Aaron. Shout out for his sub. All right, cool. So, so now that we know it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me just actually. Boom, boom. All right, cool. So we'll just do that and then we'll, uh, let's see. We'll just do, we'll keep it simple. Don't worry, we'll fix this, don't worry. Let's make this sound a little bigger. By the way, like the video, we got 16 likes. We need four more likes so we can get the 20. I'm happy with 20. And then we can, you know, and then we can go away feeling good. Uh, all right, let's add some Convolver. So I might do two stacks of it. One that's kind of more for like the body and one that's more for the atmosphere. So we'll uh, start with this one. Which I usually just use reverb devices. I know there's like a bunch of others, but uh, usually these like do me do me well. All right, let's see. Let's take out that first. All right, and then that's like way too much of a tail, so we'll cut that as well. EQ it. we can more for the atmosphere
we'll do like a pause, like, you know how, just... Maybe I'll stack this synth a bit, maybe? Maybe he needs that. There's like bottom end that I don't want. All right, uh, let's, uh, Let's go to the Patreon kit real quick. Maybe add a little long boy. put it back up so we'll start there let me maybe give this a little bit of a swing you feel me Maybe stack this one too with it. Uh... Stacking, stacking is is key, man. Uh, let me save this. Uh,
right, let's add like a clap. Like the video, we need three more likes. Three more. I don't like that harm harmonic thing that I got. Yeah. I'll just if.
like the snare, but the snare is still kind of thin. Sounds good, but I still haven't even side chained it. So let's uh, let's see how that sounds. Which, by the way, come on, three more likes, three more likes to twenty. Let's let's go, let's go, let's go. 
I was thinking that second slide sounded too. Yeah, it did, but I fixed it. I love our bass, man. Our bass just be making that like, bass sounds so like ridiculously big, bro. <laughs> I love it. Our bass is OP. Um, what was I about to do again? Telepathic communication. Let's go. Hey, man, all the way from all the way from there, bro. Uh, what was I about to do again? Uh, yeah, I forgot what I was about to do. Oh yeah, side chain. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> So I train the controller. I mean, y'all have seen as me do this a million times, but anybody who hasn't yet, basically I take the kick that I just used, duplicate it and use it as a controller. Uh, and then uh, put it into mix, open peak controller. Can't hear it now. You can unmute it if you want to hear it, but yeah, it's muted because it's really used as a controller. You can use, but you know, Yo, two more likes. Oh, well, it says 17 for me, so just to be safe, three. Come on, let's get to 20, man. Hey, man, yo, one day, and I'm hoping I'm hoping this happens, you know, fairly soon, but one day I'm going to be like, yo, get me to 2K, 2K. Get me to 2K. You know what I'm saying? One day it's going to be like that. Get me to 2K likes. Right now, just give me a 20 and I'm happy, bro. I hope that day comes for real. I'm really serious. I really hope one day I can be streaming here with like freaking 5,000 people, 3,000 people watching, you know, I really, I really, you know what I'm saying? I'm really hoping for that. You know, I'm not just like sitting here, you know, you know, just like kind of just making, making music. You know, I definitely want to, I want to grow, man. I want to, we, we, we want people to see this, you know, and yeah, so. Um, okay, so. Okay, that's very clean side chain, that's very clean. Maybe I'll do a slide down, see how it sounds. Ooh, that's hard. I might like save that for the second time around. I could have had that little sec start a second measure feels like yeah no I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going in on that I'm 
just trying to think of like uh i'm just letting it come to me like what's uh like a a cool like thing to stack it with or like what's a cool like um which by the way come on three more likes like the video we need three more likes let's try to get to 20. Uh, i'm trying to keep that a good benchmark you know what i'm saying so anybody who just came in here or has been in here and hasn't hit the like button hit that like button for me maybe i'll like do like a, one of those cool little fills Classic, uh, go stupid. Maybe I'll have it start. I'm a snare. I need like a better growl there. Let me uh, go into maybe, what is that, three? Let's, I don't know, let's, I haven't gone into the 2020 kit in a while. Maybe it's, uh, maybe this one. Shit.
Uh, maybe I'll add a like, revolver or something. Also, I'm like closer to my computer, so. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yo, we're two likes away. Let's try to get the 20 likes. If you just jump in right now, uh, hit the like button. We're going to go for maybe another 15 more minutes, 15, 20 more minutes. And uh, and then, yeah, and then I'm out of here. I got some stuff to do. But yeah, hit the like button. We had 18 likes. Let's try to get the 20 and uh, I'll be a happy camper. Maybe how this sounds with the ring mod. Nope. It says 19 for me, but we need one more. Just in, you know, just in case. I like, I, I usually love using this as kind of like a little background. Like.
just to give it that little extra, you know? There we go, that's 20. That's 20 right there, let's go! Maybe this could still use a little more Convolver. I want to make it big. Big boy. I still feel like I need to stack, or yeah, layer, 
that synth a little more because it's, it's like it's dope in the high mid end but like there's something in that like mid end that like still feels kind of empty you know Damn, this shit go hard. This goes kind of hard. All right, we're at 20 likes. We're about two hours in. Uh, I have to use the bathroom so bad. Number one to orange. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, got to make a build up for this, but that's gonna take a little bit. Um, but I like this. Empty part, I'll probably add something there too.
Yeah, I like, I like, I like how that comes in for sure. So that's that. Today was EDM trap day. Uh, so yeah, Thursday, we back at it again, 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, about 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, it's another community day, so if you want to send in some stuff for feedback, by all means, go ahead. I'll review it for about a minute, minute and a half. Um, if you want to drop anything for collabs, go into the Discord. Dis- uh, it's ricky- ricky-remedy.com slash Discord. Um, in the patreon i see a couple people went into patreon today i really appreciate you guys subscribing means absolutely everything so that i can continue doing this um and then uh yeah uh share this video with people who might have missed this who are probably really into edm trap and kind of wanted to get get a little nostalgia um and like you know like just their interpretation of it and you know i just kind of gave my input on it and maybe they'll agree um and yeah uh I'm going to get to work on this fucks with it mix, um, an interview and stuff. They asked some awesome questions. Uh, really excited for the write up, really excited for the, uh, the opportunity. Um, thank you guys again for getting me to 20 likes. Let's try to keep this up. I really want to kind of keep this consistency going cause that, that is key. Um, the engagement means absolutely everything to me. Um, thank you rare. Thank you. Uh, TC remix. Thank you everybody that came in and, uh, made shit happen today. So. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, use the bathroom now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make some food and get back to work. So uh, great stream, you guys. Uh, this was awesome. Maybe I'll finish this up for the mix as well. Uh, I'm gonna add some more stuff into the Patreon. And um, thanks again, guys. And I'll see you uh, Thursday, 3 p.m. Same time. Much love. <laughs>